the Hamptons. Summer playground to some of New York City's biggest celebrities. But beyond the quaint streets and high-end shops, there's something lurking in the water. Well, it's a beautiful day to be out by the water, and from here, everything looks perfectly normal. But if you take a closer look, you'll see that looks can be deceiving. Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'm here in sunny Southampton, Long Island, where I'm going to be introducing you to the Shinnecock Bay Restoration Program, or SHRP for short, and the exciting work that they're doing to improve water quality here in Shinnecock Bay. But first, let's delve a little bit deeper into the problem. Welcome to the 2017 State of the Bays here at Stony Brook Southampton campus. This year's event is titled Hope at a Brink. So we're going to learn about the major things affecting Shinnecock Bay and the surrounding water bodies. Well, let's head inside and learn from some of the experts. Community members have come to hear directly from Dr. Chris Gobler, an expert on how humans are impacting water quality in the Bay. It's a multi-fold uh, issue. There are multiple concerns. Uh, there's been the loss of shellfish, there's been the loss of seagrass beds, and then along with that the loss of finfish. And the ultimate cause of all these things is an overloading of nitrogen which is leading to algal blooms. The algal blooms shade out the seagrass. It can be toxic to some shellfish. The math has been done and the numbers are in and it's really it's wastewater from home. So uh, septic tanks and cesspools. We've had Shinnecock Bay close to shell fishing because the shellfish have been toxic. Uh, so that's a serious human health concern. Following the event, many people were eager to express both their concern and discuss possible solutions. We have to control development and make sure it goes in the right places and that we can mitigate the damage that people bring with human habitation, whether it's sewage or consumption or destruction of habitat. All right. So now that we know the problem is algae, which is being created by these enhanced levels of nitrogen in the water, and it's coming primarily from wastewater, what can we do about it? Well, the ultimate solution would be to stop pollution from the source. So replacing old septic tanks and eventually converting to a sewer system. But because that is a long and very expensive process, we need to find an in the water solution while we wait. And that is exactly what SHRP has done. Since 2012, SHRP's goal has been to combat the deterioration of Shinnecock Bay through carefully crafted restoration efforts as directed by scientific research. These efforts focus on replenishing eelgrass beds and shellfish populations to enhance the uptake of nitrogen in the bay. Shellfish are extremely efficient at filtering algae out of the water. Don't believe me? See for yourself. Both of these tanks are filled with water from the bay and include equal amounts of algae. One-year-old oysters, which respond right here in the lab, have been added to the tank on the right. You can easily see that over just a few hours, the water has become almost completely clear. Turns out shellfish are good for more than just slurping down with some Tabasco. SHRP has harnessed the true power of these guys by creating clam sanctuaries and oyster reefs in key areas throughout Shinnecock Bay. In addition to shellfish, SHRP is rebuilding the bay's eelgrass habitat to provide shelter for the bay's diverse range of crab and fish species. You'd be amazed at what critters are living right off the shore. As part of their monitoring efforts, SHRP conducts trawls, which involve dragging a net behind a boat to collect a sample along the bottom of the bay floor. SHRP volunteers then sort through the eelgrass and seaweed to see what they can find. Each animal is carefully recorded by species and size before being released back into the bay. They've found anything from northern pufferfish, horseshoe crabs, pipefish, flounder, and mantis shrimp, just to name a few. There is a surprising diversity of marine life in Shinnecock Bay, which is why it is so important to keep the bay healthy. Another fascinating monitoring technique they use is called BRUV, or Baited Remote Underwater Video. These videos are captured by GoPros, which have been lowered to the bay floor. This video actually captured a few dogfish sharks. So the big question now is, have these efforts been successful? 
The good news is that our surveys have shown that the hard clans are indeed growing and they're indeed reproducing. We've seen evidence of juvenile shellfish in areas where they haven't been seen before. As of the end of 2016, we have over 2 million hard clams in western Shinnecock Bay. Since our restoration efforts, we've measured that the occurrence of Alexandrium, or the harmful red tide, has really declined progressively. We would need 33 million shellfish in the western bay in order to really get that water quality up to where it needs to be. Although we're not there yet, we're not at 33 million, we hope that we can be. CHIRP is doing some really amazing work, and there are so many ways for you to be part of the solution too. You can limit your impact by using low nitrogen fertilizers, or plant a rain garden in your yard to help absorb nutrients, or get out on the water and join CHIRP in one of their exciting projects. You can check out their website for volunteer opportunities. And remember, the next time you look out on the water, try to think about what's going on beneath the waves.